You don't expect this shit to happen. Like, I see this shit in movies. You don't expect it to happen to you. Guys, uh, I wasn't gonna vlog this. I live a real life. This is Boston, Massachusetts, man. Today, I almost lost my life. And my goblins, what's up? I'm Turk and I'm back with another video. I live forever, I don't ever die. Murder, murder, murder on my mind. Line after line after line. Time after time, I'ma thrive. Push a button, then I start to drive. Surf boy ripping through the tides. Power range of mighty morphin time. As you must know by now, I'm gonna start the video off with a lesson. Every video's gonna have a lesson. And just because I'm a football guy, it's always gonna relate to football. Today's lesson is not necessarily about hard work, but it's about shortcuts. Growing up playing football, you know, we did something called suicides. We would run to a line and run back to the line we started off on, then run to the next line, then run back to the baseline, and then run to another line, run back to the baseline. And usually our baseline was the end zone. The thing is, if you took a shortcut to do this, like didn't touch a line, or if they say put both feet past the line, if you didn't do that, you ran a lap. And guess what? You had to come back and do the suicides over again. So you end up working a lot harder than you would have in the first place. So don't cheat yourself and don't take the shortcut. Say if you're building a house and you rush through the foundation because you just wanna hurry up and have a house built. Not necessarily a good house built, you just want to build a house, to say it's up. So you build this house, you take a lot of shortcuts and now a year later, there's things going on with it where it's not safe. You are no longer able to live here safely and you gotta tear this shit down. You're losing money. And now you gotta use more money to fix the things that you took a shortcut on. See how shortcuts don't work? Cheating in a relationship is a shortcut. And I'm not saying I've never been there because I have. In a relationship, if you fall for temptation, and you're still gonna be with that person, now you gotta work three times as hard to one, get their trust back, and for you guys to be on, you know, like smooth sailing like you was before. Is it really worth it to take the shortcuts in life? That's my lesson. I'm not gonna lecture you guys. Trust the process somewhere below Zeus, keeping my head above the side. Now let's get into the video. Look at my door. This shit cracked, but it didn't come through. It cracked. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't fucking be here. Guess I just gotta charge it to the game as my loss. The aftermath, all right. Still kind of tough to speak about, but I'm coming from a better place. It's the holiday season. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling cheerful. I'm feeling thankful, you know? So let's get through it. So immediately after, I'm not gonna lie, the girl I was with, I thought she set me up. Do I think that now? No, not really. I didn't know who to trust, right? So I didn't trust her. I didn't trust people I told where I would be. I didn't even trust my job because I was suspended from work and I got into a big thing with the supervisor. So for a minute, I was thinking the supervisor set me up. If he wasn't in my circle, like my homeboys, like the five that I really rock with, I wasn't really speaking to anybody. Like family hit me up. I wasn't replying to nobody. A bunch of friends hit me up. And if it was a direct message, I did not, 
I didn't get back to them. This still family I have not spoken to since that happened in April. Everybody's a suspect. I had a problem with my sister. Um, for a minute, I thought she did it. I wasn't really getting along with my mom at the time, so I felt like she did it. Like everybody was a suspect to me for real. So there was two major things that I thought immediately after, right? One, I was hoping it was mistaken identity, a random shooting. Two, I was thinking, I hope it's not for me, because if it was for me and they know they didn't get the job done, they're gonna come back sooner than later. At that time, I was going through a lot in life and I have a bunch of secrets. And I'm only gonna say this in this video, only maybe five people know about this. So if they don't watch this video, they will never know. I'm not gonna say this out loud. I'm not gonna write no Facebook post where I usually get the most of my traffic from, but I was homeless. I was living out my car. I was going to hotel, not daily, because of course I can't afford a hotel daily, but like maybe on the weekends. Cause I gotta get up for six in the morning at work. So I figured why pay for a hotel room when checkout is at noon and I have to be out by six and I'm not gonna see it until I'm off of work at 2.30. So why would I get a hotel room if it's not the weekend? So if it's not Friday and Saturday, there's no point. I wouldn't even get it on Sunday. So I was living out my car. I had bags of stuff in my trunk or whatnot. I had stuff on my back seat. There was only room for me and a passenger, which was the girl I was seeing. She knew my situation and she tried her best to get me out of it. But in reality, Boston was just too expensive to, to get up on my feet. But everything that I own, just about everything, there's a few things still at my mom's house, but everything that I own is in this car. Like, look, like I plan to play football this year. I got my all my football equipment, my cleats, my shoulder pads, my helmet, my, my gloves, everything is in this bag. What I need to fucking edit is in this bag. This is my MacBook, guys. This is my MacBook. I'm living out my fucking car. Let me show you. Let me show you. Open up my trunk. This is some of my belongings because I had just came from vacation. This is more of my belongings, you know. I have clothes here. This is clothes I could put on, like my gym clothes and shit. I have more clothes in another black bag back here. Those are my pink trunks. And then in this clear bag is my dirty clothes that I gotta wash. You see how packed my trunk is? I'm living for my car. These are the things that happens to me. So when they did this, they didn't just shoot up a vehicle and it's just like busted my windows. Like you literally destroyed my home. It wasn't the hottest of days then. It was still pretty chilly out. So after that, I'm going to a hotel out in East Bumfuck with a window shattered. And when I say I'm going to a hotel, it doesn't mean I'm checking in. I'm just going to the hotel parking lot to go to sleep with a busted window. So a lot of people was hitting me up saying, you need to get a gun. I can put a gun in your hands. Illegal, you know, because I had a situation going on where I couldn't get it legally. And it's just like, I was looking at my phone in this Zoom call with these ladies to get this job. It's called the ambush. There's nothing you can do if you're ambushed. I could have had a pistol on my lap. It wouldn't have saved me that day. So everybody's like, this is why I keep mine on me. It, it doesn't matter. It's an ambush. You wasn't going to get your hand on it. Trust me. I lived it. This is not the first time I've been around a shooting, but this is the first time I got shot at. Like I was the target. So this one hit a little different. 
If you guys want to know about the other times I've been around shootings, I got a good three to four stories for you. Hey, growing up in the hood, I could tell you about it. Just let me know if you want to hear about it. Some of it I could laugh at today, but this situation, because I was the one being shot at, is, I don't think it's ever going to be funny to me. Now I'm always looking over my shoulder. When I leave the house in the morning, I'm always looking both ways. I look to see who's sitting in their car. I look to see what cars don't look familiar. I look to see if I see the car that shot at me. Like my life almost got taken. Sometimes like I feel like I, I passed. Sometimes I feel like I passed and me, speaking to you right now or when I speak to my friends or when I speak to my family I speak to my daughter like it's just like I'm in heaven right now and I'm I'm living in this false reality like I'm stuck in a dream like you know when uh, you get sleep paralysis like you're just stuck in a dream but it's not so bad but I am stuck there and that's what my reality feels like I want to say a good quarter of the time. You know, like Bruce Willis on uh, The Sixth Sense, a little boy was seeing ghosts. Spoiler alert, Bruce Willis is a ghost the whole time and he did not know. That's, that's how I feel. If I could describe it in any way, I would say, that's exactly how I feel. If you know somebody that dealt with trauma, I'll tell you what not to do because some of my friends do this, just associates, it doesn't matter. But they feel like it's cool, right? And, and they're not trying to be offensive. So I don't wanna make it seem like I'm coming at them because they probably don't know any better, right? But they'll send me videos of like people getting shot in their cars or They'll tag me in some world star shit. You know, world star gets crazy. So they'll tag me in like people getting shot or like, especially in their cars, like a guy, Indian Red, you know, he was on FaceTime talking to his boy on IG Live and somebody like dumped like 12 shots into the car. And to me, that's like graphic and like trigger. It's just like, why would you, why would you send me that? I don't want to see shit like that. I, I didn't before the incident, but especially now after it, that's not things I want to see. When it happened, you know, like, not my neighbors, but her neighbors came out, right? And they're like, we're surprised you're not hit. One of them gave me like a dustpan to scoop the glass off my seat and a trash bag to put it in the trash bag or whatnot. And, um, another trash bag just to put over the seat because it's small pieces of glass. I wasn't going to get everything. So she gave me trash bag to put on my seat. She said, oh my God. One, you're a very handsome man. Another one is saying you're a beautiful man, which I appreciate. But at the time, I'm just like, thank you for the compliment, but that's not where I'm at right now. But they wasn't saying it to get at me. They're saying like I was blessed. Oh whatnot, and and they like literally said word for word. It's just like you wasn't touched. You should not be here right now. You have a higher purpose. You have a guardian angel looking over you. Somebody stopped that bullet that hit your door a uh, inch low from hitting you because you have a deeper purpose in life. Find that purpose, kid. Cause they was older ladies. Find that purpose and, and you just rock out. <laughs> you rock out, you know? I'm just like, okay. Since then I did a lot of procrastinating, but I gotta find my purpose, you know? So far, I won a championship game in semi-pro. I won my flag championship in football. And now I'm trying to be consistent with the YouTube and I'm gonna get into the acting real soon, which I hope you guys see. I really thought about purchasing a gun, but I realized if I do it illegally, that's a shortcut. And if I get caught with an illegal firearm, one, I'm gonna go to jail. And two, I'm never gonna be able to own one legally. You see what I mean? You don't take shortcuts. You just gotta trust the process. Somewhere below Zeus, 
keeping my head above the side. It's balance, baby. And thank you for watching. I'm Turk, and I'm out. You don't expect this shit to happen. Like, I see this shit in movies. You don't expect it to happen to you. Had to hit me now, I'm sipping on the deuce deuce. I just wanted to get big on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You still here? Well, why you here? Go ahead and click that like button. And the subscribe button. Okay. The notification bell, too. Leave a comment saying you did so. Lastly, click the video on the right more cool content. It's turp time.